Gitchen Park News. Our main story today is the death of two Swedish citizens over to Throne and Katie who have four reports. On Wednesday the 18th of March, in the southwest in the Swedish city of Gothenburg, two men were killed and up to 15 injured in an armed rampage. It is said that the two men who died were between the age of 20 and 25. Police have reported that between 10 and 15 people were hit by the bullets with a variety of injuries. They say automatic weapons were used, believed to be AK rifles. An eyewitness who did not give their name said, I did not have a chance to think about what happened. Then I saw that my friend was bleeding. I tried to stop the bleeding as well as I could with my hand. One witness told Sweden's STV broadcaster that two men entered the restaurant and simply opened fire. This has been a devastating night for Sweden. Thank you, Katie and Trey. Now for a report from NASA um, featuring unusual happenings on Mars. Now, the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights as more commonly known, is caused by electric, energetic particles such as electrons bouncing into the atmosphere, therefore causing the gas, gas to glow. Today, a NASA spacecraft orbiting Mars has seen what seems to be the Northern Lights reaching deep into the planet's atmosphere. The Maven mission watched these mysterious lights for five days up to the 25th of December last year. The results were presented at a science conference in Texas, and Professor Tchaikovsky said that this one was unexpected. Scientists have also discovered dust clouds at high altitudes of between 150 and 300 km, which do not match seemingly secure predictions. Experts are still puzzling over how the dust got there and how exactly the northern lights are appearing. So, what are your views on this aurora borealis? Having to be sighted on Mars. I think this is absolutely amazing. This is the scientific discovery of this century. The Aurora Borealis, you pronounce it much better than me, or Northern Light, is caused by the interaction of cosmic rays, which is a badly misnamed thing. It's very high energy particles entering our magnetosphere, having their path and their amount of energy change, and then being able to interact with our atmosphere and creating these amazingly beautiful displays of light. Without our magnetosphere, we would be dead. If there is genuine northern lights being sighted on Mars, this suggests Mars has a proper magnetosphere as well as a potential atmosphere there and life may genuinely exist on Mars. Really? So how do you think that Mars has created this magnetosphere? Well it will clearly need to have some kind of core of ferromagnetic elements, those of course are elements where the electrons are not bound so that you match a left hand spin with a right hand spin but you will have a change and you might have several right hand spin so they will be magnetic elements like cobalt, iron and the one I've forgotten, hambrasic, nickel on planet Earth. But because we have a liquid metal core with these elements in, our core produces a magnetosphere. Magnetosphere, as with all of the coolest things in science and physics, is to do with magnetism. It was once called spooky action at a distance. That's still the best description. So, are you saying that Mars could have a central core made out of... That, at the moment, with the limited evidence we have available, seems the only logical explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Matt. Now, gamers have shown their displeasure for the recent gaming BAFTAs. Matt will tell us more. Destiny wins best video game BAFTA. For many of us, this is no big news. A studio with one of the largest shooters under its belt creates a triple A box to go with a reported budget of nearly £350 million. Pounds. Destiny, released on September 9th, received poor reviews. It was victim to thousands of game breaking bugs and frustrating game mechanics that left gamers ready to trade in their copy. Bungie, the studio behind the game and creators of Halo, one of the most prestigious and commended game series of our generation, left, led gamers to expect a thrilling experience which they didn't even receive. The game is fraught with an uninspiring story, horribly repetitive gameplay, and poor voice acting from a host of celebrities and professionals, including Peter Dinklage from HBO's Game of Thrones and Marvel's X Men. Gina Torres from The Matrix and Suits, plus many other A-listers. Other news from the BAFTAs. Gamers were so disappointed by a game with so much going for it, they never expected Destiny to receive any awards. Other big name titles of the last year, including the beautiful open world racer, Forza Horizon 2, classic family racer, Mario Kart's newest entry, and Ubisoft's Far Cry 4, all left empty handed, using up to many indie games like Oli Oli and One Human Valley. This year's video game BAFTA was really well a shock. This is Matt, recorded with BBC Skills Report. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Matt. Now, chocolate is a topic which is regularly on people's minds, like mine, for instance. Regularly, however, it has become the focus of controversy. 
Alex Capri's Capri. trying to stop the USA importing British-made chocolate results in anger civilians, who say that American chocolate is inferior. Many blame Hershey's, who have the right to make British Capri's, but say it is a trademark infringement. John Hanson, owner of an American shop selling British candy, says American chocolate is rubbish. He also said Cadbury's chocolate tastes like chocolate, whereas Hershey's chocolate tastes like wax. However, he isn't on his own. 37,000 others signed a petition to stop people buying Hershey's. Many have written comments along with their signature, hoping to change Hershey's chocolate. Dane Thomas from Minnesota says, Maybe the reason people prefer British chocolate is that it's not the over-sugared, minimal cocoa, butter garbage that Hershey's make. If they will sell more products, how about they make a better product? However, Hershey's does sell. They sold $7.4 billion worth in 2014. A test was carried out where British and American adult tasters had to try to tell the difference between British Cadbury's and Hershey's, and everyone could. However, when British and American children tasted the two Cadbury's, most of the British preferred the US, and the Americans preferred the British. Hello, this is Winston. He is an American living in Britain. So, what do you love so much about British chocolate? What's your favourites? My favourites are Snickers, chocolate buttons, and Cadbury's and I like Cadbury's. How do you eat your cream eggs? I got the whole thing in my mouth and then suck Wow, that's impressive. How many do you think you can eat in one day? I think maybe five per hour. That's, that's impressive. You won't be for big one this year at Easter? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Winston. Back to the studio. Thank you all. Now for our 60 second sports update, direct from Ditchin Park School. Over to Katie and Fred. This is Ditchin's 60 second sport update. Today on the 19th of March, Ditchin's girls hockey team under 12s and 13s are playing in a hockey festival. The teams that are involved are Autumn Common A and B teams and Dunhurst A and B teams. Also, after that hockey festival, the under 12s netball team have a match against the Petersfield School. Let's hope they win. On the 18th of March, Ditchin Park played in the Hockey Festival at Dunhurst. Ditchin's team was a mixture of under-12s and under-13s, with our main striker Elsa in year 7. It was a round-robin tournament, so that means that every goal you score you get a point, and the team with the most points at the end is the overall winner. Unfortunately, Ditchin didn't manage to come first, we did not, but we did end up coming third. Alton Conference A team came first, and Dunhurst's A team came second. Well done to all the girls who took part. Back to you, Arthur and Steve. Thank you, Katie and Brett. Thank you for watching the BBC Ditchin Park News. This is me, Arthur, signing off. Have a good evening. <laughs>